Hi, I welcome all of you to 12th Man at Rapid Leaks. My name is Dev Tyagi and today I am in the midst of an engrossing debate, should I put it like this. The moment I say the word cricket, all of us have our favourite role models, our idols, our favourite cricketers. They could be batsmen, bowlers and we know that we can speak about them endlessly into the night. But is it fair to only think of men's cricketers when the name of the sport is taken? And if at all it is unfair, which perhaps means that women's cricket hasn't really been getting the kind of attention it so deserves for such a long time, then who's at fault? Is it us fans who are constantly engaging in rabble-rousing on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter? Is it the opinion makers, the cricketing fraternity? Who really is at fault that women's cricket is not getting the attention it deserves? Surely the girls who are batting, bowling, who have successfully carved a niche in a game so highly embedded in the DNA of male domination are not to be blamed here. What I'm going to tell you today, to make a sense to this discussion, I'm going to remind you of five amazing feats achieved by women cricketers that has done their bit to endure and continue the fight for women's cricket being recognized as a potent form of cricket, as an exhibition of outstanding skill, agility, fitness, concentration, skill and greatness. Feat number one, Jhulan Goswami. She should actually be called the West Bengal Express. You know why? Because in playing close to two decades, she has scaled a feat of over 300 international wickets. That's not too bad for a women cricketer, is it? Feat number two, Minion Dupreeze, South Africa, the former captain of South African cricket team. Minion is approaching 3000 ODI runs. She is also a child prodigy. If South Africa is known as the Proteas Fire, then Minion adds spark to the Proteas Fire. Feat number three, Elise Perry, the first woman cricketer to hit a double century in a day-night test, that too at the highest level of cricketing rivalry. Yes, I'm talking about the Ashes. Rewind the clocks back to that amazing innings that was played down under in Australia. Well, there were players like um, Sarah Taylor, there were players like the legendary members of the current English team who were against her. But Elise, Elise Perry did not know how to stop. That fantastic pink ball 100 under lights was just stuff of legends. Moving on, feat number four, Smithy Mandana. At the age of 22, where most girls her age are perhaps confused as to what they want to become. They are trying to find out the true purpose of their beings. This earnest left-handed batswoman from Maharashtra has taken the Indian flag and catapulted it to the attention of the entire world. She has struck the fastest T20 hundred in the format called Kia Super League as witnessed on August 3rd, 2018 this year. A date all of us should remember, perhaps in Ian Bishop fashion, remember the date if not the name because the name obviously is always already there. Smriti Mandana bats with the elan of a skilled veteran of the game but at 22 she has already scored runs at a strike rate of over 82 in ODI, at a strike rate in excess of 112 in T20s and she's closing on 2,500 plus international runs. She has already scored 13 50s in the ODI cricket and she's scored 300s too. She's already scored 550s in T20s. Is that not a great feat? Moving on and finally, Deandra Doughton of the West Indies. In a few days of time, she would be wanting to up the ante of run scoring for Stefani Taylor's West Indies. Guess what? She's the only West Indian batswoman as of now to have scored not one but two T20 hundreds. Isn't that beat phenomenal? I leave the case for you fans and experts of the game to decide whether women's cricket has arrived of age or not. But these facts certainly point to a direction that we need to consider women's cricket and their achievements with a great solidity that hitherto hasn't really been given. And we don't know who's to be blamed. Cheers.